Hi everyone, this is Byte Relay, and today we are going to talk about tools and such stuff. Well, code editing tools is an important part of every day's life, and true hackers will insist that you should use Veeam or Emacs. Well, I think really true hackers should use uh, punch cards and a screwdriver to edit their stuff there. Uh, that was back in the days when I used to connect to internet by whistling to the phone. But now we have easier to use tools and one of such tools is Visual Studio Code. Uh, to start with uh, trick, tips and tricks with Visual Studio, uh, let's see uh, how works shell integration. Uh, most of the time I have a lot of Postgres installations, uh, like uh, well, at least five Postgres source codes in my home directory right now. Uh, and actually Postgres development is all around console development and shell scripts and to iterate or some hacking scenarios, you have to use console and shell scripts. So uh, it's a wise idea to install sh uh, shell shortcut to uh, open exactly current uh, folder in uh, working directory uh, in Visual Studio Code. Uh, this shortcut can be installed with uh, Visual Studio, just uh, open uh, shell command, install command into pass, and it will it will do it for you. By the way, this this search query is very useful in uh, Visual Studio Code. To open some files, you can just uh, search them here, or you can search with a hash for some methods like search uh, it's doing fuzzy searching and also you can use some commands using uh, this uh, character uh, when you will install uh, Visual Studio code and start using it uh, it will give you some extensions uh, first of all, it will propose you to use C and C++ extensions and these extensions will give you nice navigation over your source code. You can go to uh, you can go to declaration of a function, definition of a function. You can uh, look up a member of a type and you can uh, look up declaration of a variable, etc. Uh, but one of problem uh, of a problem with this is that uh, from time to time it goes to temporary installation. Temporary installation is a uh, contains copy of uh, header files of all Postgres source codes uh, for for reasons of temporary installations. And when you start editing, changing something here, actually it will be written with the next make check comment and that's kind of a problem uh, to avoid this problem uh, you can use a simple trick uh, you can exclude everything from uh, searches uh, in temporary installations to do so I'm uh, opening a file settings JSON and embedding there some settings to avoid using uh, tem temporary installation in, in file search, in CPP file search, etc. And uh, to make this work, I have to quit uh, Visual Studio and uh, run it again. Now, if I am looking what's inside, uh, what's inside of a structure, uh, this, this heads me to actual source code, which can be edited safely uh, without risk of losing of some of my changes. 
another uh, interesting part of Visual Studio is of course uh, remote debugging. I have a lot of different uh, virtual machines uh, and I can attach uh, debuggers there and uh, edit folders on remote machines from my local Visual Studio and it works uh, quite well, except uh, that C++ extension do not work well there. But uh, in fact, what showed to me most useful uh, is local debugging. Uh, to start local debugging with Visual Studio, you have to uh, configure your Postgres installation uh, with special flags. Uh, you have to give these flags to compiler. This and and probably this and also uh, enable debugging and give, give a flag about enabling debugging. After doing so, um, you can start your Postgres installation and configure Visual Studio. To configure Visual Studio to debug uh, Postgres, you have to edit uh, launch JSON and configure here which exactly uh, binary you are going to debug and how. Uh, these JSON files are in a video. So when, when this is configured, you can run attach you don't have to look up a uh, process ID. Back in days, you should uh, run select g backend <coughs> process ID. But now it's not necessary. Uh, you can just say that you are looking for idle Postgres backend attached to it. Uh, now you can uh, put a breakpoint into exec. Simple query, simple query. Hmm. Simple run simple query. Exec Okay, let's just place uh, place somewhere play, uh, place a breakpoint in postmaster uh, somewhere in init postgres here. Hmm. Run select one. Huh. We can't put uh, this place will already was executed. Mm. Let's find some place where we can have um, breakpoint. I think we can have a breakpoint in NB3 scan NB3 scan NB3 Okay, let me search. <laughs> Now we uh, breakpoint was hit. We can see the, here number of our breakpoints that are currently set. 
we have a stack trace and can navigate across frames and within a frame we can uh, see local variables access accessible from this frame and also we can try to uh, see some uh, watches, but watches uh, do not work well with macros and all other stuff. And essentially, this is like only memory reader. Uh, also, here is a pain to, uh, to step over, uh, step into, step out, and of course, detach. Uh, this is it. This is most of uh, tools that I use in Visual Studio. Visual Studio code, of course. Uh, surely I lack uh, stuff for refactoring. I miss so, so much, uh, which was here in Visual Studio back in days when I used to program uh, in Visual Studio. But, well, debugging capabilities and editing capabilities seems enough for me. Thanks for watching. Bye.